things were done very differently back then during the war. It's not like today where you have all these computers that help you put the maps and charts together. During the war, everything was done by hand. You would walk into the room, the room where I worked, and you would see rows and rows of us. We were called the military map makers. Some of us would assemble each map and chart in sections. It was very labor intensive. You needed a lot of us to complete just one map or chart. In just one generation, a quiet, far-reaching revolution has taken place. It has forever changed how information is processed, analyzed, and conveyed. It is known as the digital revolution. Today, over 400 people are taking advantage of this revolution using new production methods that are faster, more precise, more cost-effective than ever before. These are the men and women who work in the mapping and charting department of the Defense Mapping Agency's Hydrographic Topographic Center. To better understand how the mapping and charting department is revolutionizing its production, it is helpful to see its current organizational structure. The mapping and charting department's mission remains constant. To exploit a variety of source materials to produce topographic maps, nautical charts, and publications, digital data, and catalogs in support of user requirements. The department chief is responsible for guiding an extremely diverse workforce one of the most diverse group of people working for any government agency. We put this note here that the coordinates uh, refer to the old... When you look at any given map or chart, you quickly realize how many different skills are needed to create it. You need trained cartographers and geographers. You need marine information specialists, scientific linguists, technical information specialists, administrators, and clerical staff, just to name a few. How is the digital revolution changing this department today? My job within the mapping and charting department has afforded me the opportunity to compile special graphic products to support ongoing Navy operations. MC is focused on a long-term commitment to provide our customers with a quality, on-time product. The quality awareness movement begins with an understanding of the product process and customer needs. My present position has allowed me to interface directly with my customers and channel their feedback into enhancing the product. Product improvement and understanding the customer-supplier relationship is being emphasized throughout the department. This movement is being achieved through off-site customer visits sponsored by the Product Improvement Office. As part of the commitment to excellence, the department is coordinating with NOAA to resume onboard ship duty to assist in collecting bathymetric survey data for the upcoming physical year. How much will it cost to create a map? How long will it take to update a chart? What resources are required? How do you assure its quality? These are typical types of questions that need to be answered daily by the department's production programs division. This division serves as the department's management staff, providing production guidance to all department elements, as well as coordinating, reviewing, and evaluating all program assignments. The digital revolution has not changed the questions, but rather the answers. I enjoy the hectic pace in MCP, well, most of the time. The program managers here are always involved in something interesting, especially with all the production rescheduling brought on by changing situations in the world. What I like about being the administrative officer in mapping and charting is the variety of work and knowing that over 400 employees depend on me to see that personnel actions are processed accurately and that we have enough money for training and travel. If the production programs division addresses the management needs of the department, its neighbor, the production operations division, supports the various system requirements. This division is composed of two distinct branches the systems management branch and the engineering branch. 
These two units are critical to bringing the digital revolution into the mapping and charting department. The systems management branch provides the operational support to the department's production systems. They plan, organize, maintain, and control the operations and computer resources for over 20 shared systems and subsystems. The engineering branch, on the other hand, provides the developmental support for the department. Not only do they help maintain current systems, they are constantly exploring innovative processes and equipment to support product prototypes, new weapon systems, and navigation systems. Where will this new technology lead us? What hardware is needed to make a task more efficient? What kind of software will make a job more cost-effective? These are the types of process improvement questions the Production Operations Division is constantly asking. The Production Operations Office is an exciting place to work. Each day I deal with numerous customers, both inside and outside of DMA. I face daily challenges keeping MC's production running efficiently while at maximum capacity. The days fly by as MCO tries to keep the many systems in MC abreast of the constant advancements in technology. I enjoy the fast-paced, sometimes unpredictable days spent supporting the current system needs while adapting new technology to enhance tomorrow's production abilities. Although one deals primarily with topographic products and the other with hydrographic products, the missions of the mapping division and charting division are remarkably similar. To compile, color separate, inspect and revise products using conventional and new cartographic techniques. Thanks to the introduction of the digital revolution, the difference between conventional and advanced techniques is nothing short of astonishing. You have to consider that only a few years ago the average time spent compiling a map was six to nine months. And the mapping and charting department employed several hundred cartographers to do manual compilation. Soon, only a handful of cartographers will be creating products using traditional methods. The others will use advanced cartographic workstations to create their maps and charts. Many produced in an average of three to four months. That's 50% faster than before. Despite the introduction of advanced technology to these divisions, it is still people, not machines, who are responsible for quality reviews. It is still people who need to certify the adequacy and accuracy of the materials produced. Such reviews are critical because of the importance of maps and charts to military planning, intelligence operations, and the safety of navigation. These divisions have supported a wide variety of military operations, such as Desert Storm, relief efforts in Somalia and Bangladesh, as well as evacuating U.S. personnel from unstable countries. Personally, this is very gratifying to see DMA playing a bigger role in humanitarian relief efforts. Consider for a moment the mission of the department's navigation division. To provide information critical to safe navigation by DOD customers as well as the maritime community in general. Information technology is rapidly changing the way in which this division accomplishes its mission. We use it to help collect all available worldwide navigational data and to produce the DMA hydrographic and topographic catalogs. We also use it as an analytical tool, helping our marine information specialists evaluate and verify complex navigational problems and methods. On the other hand, there are jobs that we do that still require a personal touch. For example, you need people to compile and disseminate early warning radio broadcasts, notice to mariners, sailing directions, list of lights, and produce our department's world-renowned text, the American Practical Navigator, also known as Bowditch. The 24-hour-a-day broadcast desk provides rapid dissemination of long-range navigational warnings. Warnings that affect shipping and cannot wait for publishing and mailing via standard methods. Likewise, the Navigation Division maintains the Navigation Information Network, NavInfoNet, a series of data files from the notice to mariners for direct interactive queries anytime, anywhere on the globe. Another division responsibility that requires the human touch is providing technical support to the center's contract activities. 
That means that every sheet or chart or digital product that's compiled or color separated by a contractor has to pass through the hands of the division's technical representatives. Maps, charts, and digital products are dynamic, constantly changing to reflect current global conditions. The Technical Information Division is responsible for making available much of the source material used to create these products. It operates and maintains the DOD Maps and Charts Library, DMA Depositories, Collections, Geographic Names, and Servicing Branches. Our library represents as unique a collection of maps and charts as found anywhere in the world. We have a collection branch that collects from all available source material to support DMA production requirements. For example, we'll gather maps and charts produced by other countries. We also have a cataloging branch that makes these materials available to all DMA employees. We do this through the production management segment, or PM. Through PM, over 50,000 items annually, as well as track over 40,000 MCNG products and over 60,000 pieces of film, reaper mat and high density tapes that are loaned from the library each year. The division is also responsible for DMA depositories located in Riverdale, Maryland, Mineral Wells, Texas, and Gila Bend, Arizona. These depositories hold over 250,000 sets of reproducible material in support of the agency's reprint and compilation requirements. Like the library, Repromat holdings are cataloged and circulated through PMS. The role of the depository is critical to DMA in terms of meeting not only all of our routine printing, but also our urgent printing requirements during crisis situations. Arabic, Russian, Tamil, Farsi. A knowledge of these languages and their scripts is the domain of those who work for the geographic names branches. It is they who supply names and boundary support to the agency's map and chart compilers. At one time, they used common index cards to record their data into the foreign place names file. Now their work is entered into a database via scanners, plotters, and graphic workstations. This database gives the analysts a research capability that will serve DMA into the next century. The Geographic Names database is used not only for servicing DMA maps and charts rapidly and accurately, but also to provide extensive and specialized support to the Foreign Names Committee of the U.S. Board on Geographic Names. The support includes publishing of gazetteers and foreign names information bulletins and responding to public inquiries. This technology will allow for the growth of the names database to five times its current size in a quarter of the time it took to create the original file. The geographic names branch is an excellent example of combining a highly trained workforce with advanced technology to make our work more productive. Today, new computer systems are guiding the department into a new era. Some equipments are known as the map publishing environment, the interactive compilation system, the geographic names processing system, and the consolidated navigation system. Already, they have proven to be effective in reducing production time, increasing information availability, and responding to crisis production. Undoubtedly, these systems will change in the future, as surely as the need to update the world's maps and charts. The future for mapping and charting will be to produce digital products. Digital information is the key for our future and for the future of the Defense Mapping Agency. We are scheduled to produce the digital nautical chart and the vector smart map. We are in the information age and our customers will demand information from the Defense Mapping Agency. That demand causes us to remain aware of the technology necessary to produce these products. Based on that technology, we should be able to provide a fully integrated and a quality product to our users. While this technology will change over time, the skills needed to take advantage of these changes will remain constant. The department will always need trained cartographers, marine information specialists, technical information specialists, and geographers fluent in foreign languages. 
It will continue to employ administrative officers and secretaries, management information assistants, and library aides and technicians. It will constantly use the knowledge of navigation scientists and scientific linguists, and the experience of illustrators, editorial assistants, cartographic technicians, cataloging specialists, writers, editors, and printing and procurement specialists. It is this diverse group of people who will remain the backbone of the department. For it is they, not machines, who possess the confidence in their ability to create the best mapping and charting products possible. Recently, when we came back to DMA for our reunion, we were amazed how much has changed. The computers everywhere. It's wonderful how they're used to help the maps and charts. I was more impressed with the people I met. Of course, that part has not changed. During the war, we felt a real sense of pride in what we did. It was important work, and we knew it. to the folks at DMA today, I still see that sense of pride. The work that they're doing now is important too. So these new machines have changed the way the work is done. The people who do the work, their pride, their dedication, those are the qualities that are still here at the department.